Hello, this is Trier from the Writing Center. I'm going to go over a brief email writing process, making sure that we remember to use those magic words. So please, thank you, and all the good things. So when you are in your Outlook, you can click on New Mail. And then if you know the person's email, go ahead and type it right in. If you do not know, you can search by name. So I'm gonna go ahead and send one to Janet Beth. And then this email is gonna be about the process doc that she and I are working on. So I'm gonna say process doc updates. I wanna make sure that my subject is very clear as to what I'm talking about so that if she's got a bazillion emails, when she glances at the subject line, she'll know exactly which one she is looking for. Then, because this is um, a little bit more of a professional email, I'm not gonna start it with howdy, hi, things like that. I'm just gonna, I can do dear Janet Beth, I can say Janet Beth, however I want to. So in the Writing Center on LRL, Math Lab, library things like that we all go by our first names some of your instructors or professors or other collaborators that you come into contact with might prefer to be called mr or miss they might prefer doctor might prefer instructor professor however they introduce themselves to you that is how you will address them in an email so an email to a professor instructor anything like that is not a text message to a friend. And you need to make sure that you avoid using slang and um, like the letter U for the word you, things like that. So Janet Beth, thank you for working with me yesterday on our joint project. I have included more information in our shared folder period please let me know if you need any clarification from me I look forward to hearing from you once you are caught up period. Okay, so way back in like second, third grade, you guys started writing letters and you would have the greeting, which is this part right here. And then you would have the body of your paragraph, your letter, whatever it was. And then you would also have a closing. So because this is more professional, I'm going to do sincerely and then I'm going to sign my name. So nice simple easy now let's say i was super upset with janet beth and i wanted to send an email to her to express how angry i am i would say janet beth i would like to schedule a time to meet with you regarding the incident a few days ago I have thought about the situation and would like to work with you on a resolution, period. That's it. I'm not giving all the extra. I'm not writing a novel. I'm not going to go into why what Janet Beth did was wrong or why what I did was wrong or what should have happened or how it should have been taken care of, things like that. And obviously, I would need to make sure that um, I change my subject. So I would do incident resolution on that one. So this is basically just letting Janet Beth know I don't like what happened um, and I want to talk to her. Maybe I was a complete jerk. I don't know, but I don't like where it's sitting and I want to talk to her about it. This is a great way to also, if you are getting flagged for AI or you don't agree with a grade 
or you have questions about an assignment, this is an appropriate way to ask your professor or instructor for um, time to meet. So you can also add on here, please let me know when you are available for a conversation. Now, a lot of us have the booking links um, in our emails. If your instructor has already told you that's how they want you to schedule time, go ahead and do that. Um, and then you can send an email saying, I scheduled time to talk to you about the incident from last week. But if you're not sure how to schedule time with them or they don't have time that works for you, then a very nicely worded email is how you would communicate with your instructor. So, or even with your peers, okay? Emails live forever. You can think that they're deleted, they're not. They can come back from a million years ago. So you always want to put your best foot forward when you're writing an email.